हेलो Okay, we are going to start. Welcome everyone. I am Lia Shortino, the director of C Junction and C Junction, as you know by now, is this venue here at the BACT and we focus on Southeast Asia, all kind of issues related to Southeast Asia. And today I am particularly glad to be here with friends from Wu Manifesto and they will explain uh, themselves what is Wu Manifesto, who are the people of Wu Manifesto, what is this initiative that they are going to launch starting tomorrow and we'll take for two months uh, here at the junction. There will be four, uh, three workshops, or I mean workshop is not really uh, the right word, it's more stitching activity, which again is not so clear what it is, but they will explain uh, for us. And all three of them, uh, two of them are indeed from Wu Manifesto, and the third one has been very close also to Wu Manifesto, so I also consider her part of this collective of artists which has started to from Thailand but includes people of different nationalities. So we will start with uh, Kunlawan who will tell us first about what Wu Manifesto is all about. So please. Thank you, Lia. Here is our dear friend for Wu Manifesto and has been supporting us all so long. Good evening, I'm Lao Wan Jila and I'm a King Makers. So last year, Wu Manifesto has held a large scale of exhibition here as part of the BACC's Master Series. Uh, the three months long, uh, hold on, fight me. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to do the, the slide. Uh, the three months long exhibition titled Wu Manifesto, Throwing Connection. The, the three months long uh, exhibition, Wu Manifesto, Throwing Connection. Uh, is where we manifest show what we have done since 1997 and also create some new works during that uh, festival. Who we are. We manifest or identify ourselves as an international art exchange. It is a collective of artists, art uh, curators, art activists, writers, and people who have interest in creative artworks. Wu Manifesto start by a group of Thai women and immediately have grown to become a multinational group. The participants of Wu Manifesto concentrate in Thailand where it is originated. There were also women from Southeast Asia and many countries in Asia, Australia, uh, Europe, the Americas. We manifesto have uh, built connection and network with people around the world. So what we do, we manifesto create art project. We raise dialogue and also challenge the way how art are created, how art are presented, how arts are perceived and also consumed. You know, women also give priority to the process of making and collaboration and the time sharing of the participants as equal as the artwork that we produce. And also in the concept of our exchange, we also take into uh, take international artists into the community to learn and to share and also to enjoy with them uh, in the community itself. 
especially our must-have agenda is the workshop with uh, students, young generation in the area. You know, it's not only that the artist, the visiting artist, will learn, will share the expertise uh, with the younger generation. Often time, you know, young people also open our eyes to a different world. So let me uh, bring you to the Vunameso, what the project that we've done uh, since the beginning. So the first exhibition in 1997 is when uh, 18 women artists from my country participated. From the outlook, it looked like a simple conventional uh, art exhibition in a gallery. Yet, this is a time when uh, women works had speak loudly and boldly, boldly about women's lives and their, the, work, the, the thing that concerns women. Since the beginning, Women Manifesto had planned to create projects uh, in every other years, or what we know as the Biennale, the buzzword in today's art world. In 1999, uh, we have the exhibit saw uh, participants grow from 18 to 32 artists from 13 countries. And the exhibition has exhibited in the park at Salad Long Park, opposite the Grand Palace. From here, we can see the who manifest a way for taking shape of how they would like to do the work. So this is the work at the uh, Salon Lop Park. And it has a variety. And one thing that I can see that Who Manifesto has shown um, many uh, performance arts as well. In 1999, oh, the next version, was in 2001. It's called for a workshop in the form of artist residency, where 18 art professionals and five student volunteers spend time 10 days in a rural farm in the Sisake province near the Cambodia borders. This is where I and Brinan uh, has participated in the workshop together for the first time. Here at the Bun Bandan farm, a true exchange has happened. Women learn uh, from the village, village in the rice farming culture, learn their lives, their art, their crafts, and also from their land. Local students were invited to join the workshop with the artists and the inspiration you can show in their works. Another artist residency took place here in 2008. This time there were only five women artists, but they stayed for a whole month to learn and to create as well as open the studio and has a workshop with the student. One of the artists, what in fact the landladies, and who is become the totem of Wu Manifesto, the late Ban Parahom, she wore two hats during the artist residency, as an artist herself and also as an instructor for the workshop. The gap between those two artist residency. Who manifesto was growing with the internet technology. The procreation post creation series in 2003 is a form of a male art project. The open call for participants was circulated via email and personal network. 87 around the world sent their work digitally in the form of text images as also performance, which was published as sheet papers in a box set. This is the most diverse group of participants, you know, from all genders, artists, non-artists, from children to seniors. 
The next project, No Man's Lands, was exhibits on cyberspace to discuss about the borders that had been the issue of like ever strict borders as well as the physical borders of the internet, whether it's the virtual space versus the real reality. You can visit the website. You can still see the uh, exhibition on our website, Wu Manifesto. The decade follows the 2008 artist residency. I call it the hibernation period. The key organizer need to live their other lives as being a mother uh, to care for their aging parents. And also the hard to find funding also really, you know, hard to come by. Then there was an interest in archive the work of Wu Manifesto, coming from Asian Art Archive, coming from University of Sydney, coming also from Chulalongkorn University. Eventually, Asian Art Archive in Hong Kong uh, finished the digitization of Wu Manifesto artwork and documentation, uh, which they launched in 2020. Uh, from there, you know, invitation to show their work and collaboration with Wu Manifesto returned. That was happened shortly before the pandemic. And during the pandemic, Wu Manifesto still create project. One of the project is called La Suemo. It is an online courtyard where women meet via Zoom on the last Sunday of each month at 4 p.m. Thailand time. To share. And they always, you know, are proposed for activities that we can work together on our uh, meeting. And one of the projects is mending. So we come together and each of us bring the work that we want to mend. Um, and then talk and someone also people can also work on their mending during the talk or maybe just only talk with the mending itself and here the concept of we mend was inspired from this session and had a big launch at the Wu Manifesto for in connection at the ACC. So this is how the women come about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, the microphone was left behind. <laughs> so now we have Kun Penwadi, and uh, she is now actually here at ESCC in charge of all the major exhibition in the floor six to nine. So from now on, if you see exhibition, you know who is uh, behind uh, the organization of those. But as I say, she's also closely related to a uh, woman manifesto. So she will give us her view of woman manifesto, please. Thank you, Paria. Um, so at the everybody and <laughs> I would like to introduce a little bit about myself first. Um, I was actually a full-time curator at the Tim Thompson Art Center before and later became independent. And then for more than 10 years, and then I just received this position in only about a month and a half to be head of exhibition department and also chief curator. So I basically, half of my career path is independent. So I would like to talk about um, how I have experienced Wu Manifesto and it inspired me as an independent curator. So um, actually I study design and I, I knew myself that I didn't really, after graduation I could really work on design um, practice because I had to work with like, uh, how you say, um, 
customers who are always like demanding or whatever. So, but I know that I I love art, and I used to do internship about art before before graduation, and later um, extended from that internship, I did the volunteer with Studio Chang, where one of the leaders of the one of the leaders of Women in Festo Pinitaya was the uh, the the owner. So I was lucky that I bumped into her and then had a chance to do the volunteers work with her. And at the same year, it was the second of Women Manifesto at uh, Wang Salan Long, Salan Long Palace in Bangkok. And of course, I studied design, so I didn't understand contemporary art just yet. And that time, it's like uh, 1999, the contemporary art or public art in the in the metropolitan area is very new so it was all exciting for me so uh like people get together at the old garden palace and also how people uh, artists from around the world come into one space and perform and also um so many uh, so many people from community can join i was really new for for bangkok here also and this is about women in festival uh, second right and I was in charge of taking care of four Asian artists who was working with the uh, woman emergency house and I was assigned to work with um, a patient uh, along with the artist and HIV patient so that was the time where I I learned about HIV the first time the very first time during 1999 and I didn't really understand how contemporary art could involve with social um, issues as much as that at that time before. So I had to confront myself, confront, confront the fear of myself about HIV patient at that time. But after that, I learned through this engagement with Women Manifesto about how you can curate or you can help people emerge with the art through the social issues so after <laughs> learning from uh, manifesto learning from other curators who were really active during those uh, 1990s period and the new coming of uh, contemporary art era so i became uh, interested into curatorship and also into social engagement art and after that i became a uh, of course, I, I work with another alternative space, which is Project 304, and also was engaged with um, film festivals, but all along I was interested in social issues. And after I uh, left Jim Thompson as Center, I started working uh, independently, and I started doing more research about uh, regional area, which is like Pisan area and also Deep South area. And one of the works that I would like to relate with this women is how I curated one show with one artist who worked with the uh, um, housewife groups in the Deep South, which is Yala, Malatiwa, and Patani. And it was during the COVID time. The artists would like to um, have the ladies in the deep south where there's a certain um, kind of community and the ways of life which is very opposite from um, urban way like in Bangkok under the Muslim culture so that's why he wanted to draw some ideas draw some um, expression from those housewives um, together by have them bring their cloth, their uh, meaningful cloth from their own house. Something like um, probably a shirt, an old shirt of the son or some pants of the husbands who used to work in the um, army or something like that, uh, in, in the armed force. So um, those cloth will become um, the the process is that he asks he, he asks all the housewives to come sew all these cloths together 
so to make a uh, big quilt and it was during the COVID time so that's why how the housewife who never had time for themselves came together during the sewing process they had something to share which they never thought about it before that they could have this kind of opportunities so during those months like probably three to four months that they worked together because they they didn't have uh, any work to do at that time so they kind of lost some some lost their jobs and some had more time than ever before so they spent more time and they realized that there are a lot of things to, to share and they never could even have time together before so the the process of this going together and making a group is more than the outcome of the work so that that's why um along the process the artist kind of forecast and foreseen this kind of step before because he understood how how the housewife in the south deep south of thailand uh, live their life so he took documentary out of it and also had the interviews of the housewife and after all we can uh we can realize how they feel toward uh the lives that we share they share and also during the covid time that some of them got bankrupt out of um, economic crisis also so what i'm saying is that this kind of sharing that women manifesto have done and trying to do like extend like more of extended programs is very meaningful because i have already seen for myself working with people in community in the deep south before and it's very and it has been um uh, shown in the Bangkok Art Biennale once and also the other one in Chiang Rai Biennale last year. So this kind of work really catches people uh, in their thinking that they could relate with the process of how people feel during the, the sharing among themselves where they, never, they could never imagine before how they could confront each other and share while doing something together. They didn't realize how it was meaningful, but after all, they understand why it really works. So for me, as a curator, it's not only how you can uh, select the artwork or you know display the artwork, or you have the, I would say, power to select artists to do the work, but the process of the work and the sharing of the artist with the other people in society is also for me, most important as a curator that I have learned from uh, being part, small, tiny part of Women Manifesto. Right. So I, I would like to share about this. Thank you very much. Okay, now last but not least, we have Jamila, Kun Jamila, and she will uh, talk more about of this project, this particular project, and also the follow-up activities that are planned. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Jamila. Some people call me by Prenan. So uh, thank you, everyone, for coming and uh, spend your uh, Saturday's evening with us. And thank you, uh, Pilawan and uh, Kun Po for um, sharing this and giving the nice uh, reflection. It's, it's refreshing always to to hear, you know, um, uh, the the view, uh, especially from from uh, the curator, the eyes that look at us from the outside. And yes, because we. Um, focus a lot uh, on uh, participation and the process uh, like like Pila once mentioned about like a workshop with students or uh, among the artists themselves and uh, artists and community um, so come this project uh, called women um, so uh, women project started firstly in our BACC, um, as mentioned, Pila 1 uh, last year. 
are from September to December 2024. Uh, and um, it started like the, it sparkles by this project called Last Waymo, last Sunday of each month, where um, artists gathered every uh, Sunday of last each, uh, last month to share to um, and and one session, right? That uh, because some some of, of you uh, were not here, so it, um, if I may repeat a bit about this uh, the spark the starting point of uh, women um, happened uh, during one last way more session that uh, um, somebody said, okay, uh, we, we bring something to, to men and uh, then everyone's just like, okay, let's bring something to men to fix to. Uh, and when uh, myself, uh, my... Uh, beloved friends and colleague Rasha Nai and Nitaya, uh, both of them are like the founder of Boom Manifesto. Um, we, uh, as an organizing team, we're discussing that we insist to have an ongoing workshop um, during this long exhibition. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we want participants for people to be able to participate, right? And so we discussed what could we uh, uh, do as a workshop, right? And uh, the idea came um, to have this we meant the play of the word uh, women as uh, from Women Manifesto and mending, men as mending, fixing. Um, so um, this project, we or uh, invite people to join and to use all cut fabrics as you see um, in that basket. Okay, uh, is the materials that um, normally will be like um, most of the times being thrown away, right? Is some something or uh, not so useful from the designers. <laughs> Or maybe we have a friend designer here, Alka, that perhaps you can share something after. But uh, yeah, so um, this project actually, um, we invite people to 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 come sit down together and just uh, stitch, sew, embroider whatever they want um, to continue uh -huh, this uh, like piece of fabric. As you can see that from the beginning, it's, it's um, pretty small, okay, we have uh, on the left side, or yeah, on, on your right is uh, the uh, off-cut fabrics, and then um, people just come sit down and start small, and um, literally this uh, piece keep growing and growing. Okay, so why, why this um, uh, workshop, okay? So, um, think of like today's world. One thing that uh, we can think of is to invite people to just put down their phone, as simple as that, right? So that they can uh, reconnect, whether to reconnect with themselves or reconnect with others to, with their, um, Boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, bad friends, if that's a term today, <laughs> you know, just, just to reconnect. Uh huh. Um, and um, also using your hands is uh, connect to like rewiring your brain as well. Mm -hmm. And people has that less and less in uh, nowadays, right? Because of uh, the screen and the tablets and the phone, which become like a second world. For um, especially for the young generation, mm -hmm. and the act that they use uh, their hand, the, the process is so meditative. Many just chat with their friends, exchange their life. Some just being that quiet, being absorbed, and um, like go deep into the process. Connect with within with uh, their inner journey. Um, 
and uh, then um, it's a chance for people to just release that creativity. And for this project, as you can see, or well, feel free to come later, okay? You don't need to have any expertise about uh, stitching, sewing, embroidering. Just We just want our people to come and just make sure that uh, two pieces of fabrics are, um, are stitched together, you know? But a lot of people just start to embroider, start to make a bow tie, make heart shape, um, as you can see, you know, um, this one, somebody just uh, embroidered the ACC, right? And the heart shape and everything. And uh, I, you know, there's one, um, but uh, I couldn't, I, I couldn't find that photo. They are uh, embroidered in the face mask <laughs> onto the fabric, which for me is uh, is a great. Um, journal, you know, of, of this time that uh, we are wearing masks, okay. So then uh, this activity is a message to remind people uh, to fix things because we also in today's world that we consume so much we, and we tend to throw away things that are still fixable, you know, but because it's a pretty easy for us to just buy new things, if it's available, for especially when when you are uh, in the city or when you have the way, people tend to throw away and create so much garbage, right? So this is to remind people, hey, let's fix something that is still fixable, mm -hmm. and and to upcycle or to recycle. Okay. Um. And this is also one of the, the, the biggest uh, message that uh, women want to share is to bring people together. Like, let's say, um, each piece of fabrics, like, represent um, each person from around the world. And, and it, that will happen as well, that they talk later. But um, think of this. And some people just bring their own uh, fabric to, um, to, add on this uh, like personal story into this big piece of fabric, right? So it brings people together um, into this fragmented world full of conflicts and wars and this and that uh, every day, right? So uh, this is um, the message that we really, really love to convey, okay? So what's happening after uh, the exhibition's done? Uh, oh, okay, I uh, would love to show you some photos of like a uh, different group of people. You see students, you see a uh, uh, different um, ethnic group coming, a kid joining. This uh, photo is from India, um, the group from India that take this project. And this lady that I really want to share the cute story with you. Okay, so perhaps. Mm -hmm. See, this is the last day, so you can you see um, how how big is the fabric and uh, a lot of elements on on the the, the fabric with this uh, lady in pink uh, t shirt. Um, uh, Rasha and I we met her uh, when when we uh, we took the morning cafe together um, before we we go and and see the exhibition and. Uh, continue our work at the last day of the exhibition. And this lady sat next to us. She pulled out her, her, her stuff, the fabrics, uh, the needle, the thread, and start to embroider. And my friend was like, oh, hello, hi, how are you? We have this and this and this happening here. Today is the last day. So when Barsha and I walked to the exhibition space, we already saw her sat and <laughs> start doing things. And it's like, it's, and then um, we just walk around, busy with our work. Then she, she caught us. She, want, she did this for us. It's called Ban Bu Manifesto, which is one of our projects. Um, Ban means house, as you know, and Ban Bu Manifesto is uh, another big project that we are setting up now. 
in northeast of Thailand in Udon Thani. She presented this to us, and and uh, Varsha and I were a bit in tears. You know, I still have goosebumps talking about this. So this is Woman Manifesto. This is what we we want to bring and we want to share to the people. This are uh, um, gentle, this loving, this supportive uh, energy. So thank you, thank you, Pilawan. Ah. All right. Um, so what's next? After the exhibition, um, we feel that this uh, project, this women, should continue. So um, myself just contact Leah here so that we have this uh, continuation that we will talk about that later. But here are the list of the sites of engagement that take women project on. So we have this uh, Maharani Shim Nabai uh, in Baroda, and um, we have this uh, two women's community space in uh, UAE Al Madam and Al Hamria in Sharjah, uh, by Women Festo in Udon Thani in uh, this um, place in Germany. Hers felt sorry if I pronounced that wrong or uh, wrong and uh, in Dundee, UK, in Sydney, Australia. And this will continue in our uh, AVID uh, um, exhibition, which is a big uh, um, feminist um, forum, World Forum, Association for Women's Rights in Development, which will happen in uh, December this year. So uh, the part of women will be shown there along side with a uh, sub part of the archive. Mm -hmm. So there will be 2,500 2, participants from around the world and we sent out the message that uh, for the participants to bring their own fabric and to continue the work. So we are looking forward to, to this as well, to, to, to have the add-on from uh, around the world. And now, see Junction. Uh, so, um, the C Junction, what's happening after this, it will be the active, uh, stitching activities. Okay, so it will happen uh, tomorrow, the first day on Sunday, the 16th, uh, on Saturday, uh, 29th of June, um, Saturday, the 6th and the 27th of July. So. There will be four days of stitching activities. So please, please, please do tell your friends um, uh, to, to, to join, okay? And uh, also we are open um, if, if you work with a community um, and if there is a community who wants to, to, to do this, you know, and, and um, seriously, Size doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just only a few pieces together, one meter, uh, two meters long. It doesn't matter if or or if you want to go home and start start doing this and send this to us. We are more than welcome. So uh, so please, uh, we would love for you to share and help spreading this message. And the deadline to send this uh, work is by September this year because we need to send everything to Sharjah because um, after this, oh, oh, sorry, just have a look. Um, this is what's happening in India because it's the only place that we can uh, have some uh, uh, photos ready because uh, the project there in India is done while the rest uh, of the, um, the site is still uh, ongoing and they're not having the photos yet. So you see how uh, we men and also men coming together to do this uh, kind of work. Uh -huh. So this is what they're doing there in India. Very pretty, I want to say. Yay. Mm -hmm. And uh, next year for Shaja at Biennale, all the pieces will be stitched together and will be presented, this is only uh, the, um, the drawing, the sketch of, of 
this is not the real thing because uh, that's in the future. We don't know what will become of what we can collect from everywhere. So uh, what we know that uh, this fabric will grow bigger. Okay. So this is only the sketch uh, of um, the Sharjah Biennial next year. This fabric, or maybe two pieces, will be presented as a form of tent or shelter because it uh, we want to create these um, um, feelings of people come together um, because the tent could be for um, uh, refugee for uh, when when um, for the time of uh, catastrophe you know when people have to come together temporarily to to be in uh, sh to, under the shelter or oh, tent also could be festive a place of gathering since the old time uh, women gathering together under the red tent etc so um this tent um will be still interactive means people can still it, it won't going to be like, oh, at our Biennale, people just go and have a look at the exhibits and go, no, this uh, piece will still welcome people to continue working there on the spot in uh, at Chaja at Biennale. Okay. So this is it. <laughs> Any question? Thank you very much. And indeed. Please, you have any question or comment uh, to give for our three guest speakers? Feel free. Okay, I see someone wants to ask. Please. <clears throat> One moment. It's a good idea that you, at the end, you make it like functional. That it's other people can see, not only see, but also use it. And I was thinking like of what they did in the old days. In days like, like they make a tent in a garden or something. Yeah, thank you, because uh, the plan was we will put the um, natural uh, mat um, on, on the floor. People's got to take their shoes off for this uh, part of the exhibition. They can sit underneath. There will be mat and cushions uh -huh, uh, underneath this uh, uh, shelter-like um, exhibit, and um, they can continue working. Uh -huh. And so, yes, so it's kind of functional. Thank you. Any other comments, reflections, or questions? So um, I'm from the fashion and textile industry, and uh, we work very much on the uh, non-art non -art side. So it's all about manufacturing and uh, retail and then consumption. Um, but I was, I've was i been in the mainstream industry for many years, and then I switched uh, to teaching sustainable fashion, sustainable textile for the last 15 years. And then I've recently done a thesis on sharing economy. In, in on clothing, so swapping and secondhand markets and rentals, etc. So for me, it's always really so emotional to see art meeting my world, you know, because my world is quite cold, cut and dry. Even so, I I, I know it's about people and the environment. I mean, the sustainability of textiles is, is such a hot topic, and we all know that it's, it's a, one of the most polluting industries, probably the third most polluting industry. In the world. Um, so for me, it's really um, so touching to see um, this topic into a different lens, to the lens of art. And you know, when you talked about the functionality or the use of so much labor, for me, that was my big worry like, oh my God, this is so much of effort and so much, you know. Um, but then art has a whole different purpose in life, you know. And for, for me, it's really. Um, it's about letting go and uh, allowing the space to come in of the, of the beauty of the work and the message. 
and it's not in a it's not tangible in in terms of financial value but it's so tangible in terms of um, um, what it reflects which is the whole aim that you mentioned of this exercise so yeah kudos to this idea and you know uh, love to contribute and uh, yes wonderful <laughs> Thank you all, Kat. Thank you so much. We are broadcasting live, so. I really admire your open attitude in here. So I was just a person by, and you really attracted me here. Not only that your smiles, your attitude, what you talk about, just the gentleman here, cut and cut, but your whole vibration just really soaked me in here. And I feel already like I'm doing this tent, you know, even though the peace is in the process, all of the process, as you said, just when I approach, this is very important. Every single element matters. I have goosebumps, and thank you a lot for being and what you do. So, oh, gentleman with a nice smile, yeah? <laughs> we will give a bonus after that. I am joking, of course. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, please, any more? Yes, okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. I am from an academic, and uh, when I look at the advertisement, obviously, it reminds me there are lots of distance, uh, like practice and discussion about like vision or of the woman that as a kind of a resistance or kind of a post traumatic way, especially among the women because they were confined to their house, and this is a very good way to. To, to share with the share the time, but also the feeling, especially we had, well, not we, really, I, I know about projects like in Colombia or in the, in South America, like the way, the whole story about how they went through this experience. They basically have a big kind of patchwork and put on that. And, but I do notice that actually it can be applied in all different ways here. Yeah. Like you said, here this is the very center of a massive urban metropolitan. So obviously the audience or your, your participants have a very different, but you know, what you mentioned that is the, um, uh, kind of dealing with post COVID. That's also some kind of a feeling, but also a sharing. And, uh, <laughs> so I, I just wonder, but actually for your reference, I'm from a university in the UK. Sometimes we do strike among the staff and one of the activities organized by my colleague is the women's staff get together while we're doing strike we sit down and it's as a way of then we send out our thing as a protest as well but but the thing is that i'm wondering you have like different like in india the group in india or here people here not always women there's all sorts of them. so what kind of thing you find out or you notice the difference or you notice kind of special here and now than somewhere else that you really heard about it. Like kind of more stories from that. I have experience. <laughs> I I did the uh, uh, residency in Japan two thousand fifteen for the alternative space about uh, well, art, alternative art space, but I found it more interesting that uh, it didn't have to involve with art. So I went around like wandering. I, I wrote um, an article called Wandering Around or something. So I found this place called Irregular Asylum Bookshop. It's an anarchist bookshop. <laughs> And I was drawn to it, like like you you have been drawn to this place. It was underground, and I went there, and I found a lot of anarchist book, and they saw like artist um, product like this, and I I was attracted to to the place, 
And then I went there many times, and then but I didn't really talk to the owners as yet. So I went there, I keep going back, and I found out that there was um like a sofa bed for for some purpose. And then I kind of learned a little bit by a little bit, but without not without talking to the owner yet. I observed that um there are some people come by and stay and sleep there, and the other day um they just gone. Already, and later on, I saw the sewing machine, two sewing machine over there, and then I couldn't see anybody using it just yet. So that was the time that I start talking to the owner. I decided to start talking to the owner because I wanted to know what their what the purpose of, uh, of the sewing machine in the bookshop and Anaki's bookshop. So he said that. This place is, or they have, or they also have the printmaking workshop also. So the place is more like very underground, like um scene, right? And the the owner said that every Thursday there would be people come by and sew together in these two, uh, uh, uh using these two sewing machines. And I didn't know. I I I was like I was surprised, and I didn't. I never had any experience about sewing, um, in uh, uh, as an activity in a bookshop or any place before. I never had experience. So I asked why, and he said that this place is more like a artist shelter or something. So. Even though it's um like a resistant kind of environment place, but uh it's more like because they have to fight a lot, right? Like doing some artwork or uh talk about uh anarchism or like social issues. So that's why they have some place for them to relax and do some building together without forcing. But they just set up the sewing machine and set up the program that every Thursday, you can come and do something together. So they just came and share and talk, like I mentioned about how the Deep South Housewife group doing. So it was part one of the the sample that I can share. It came. I I mean it um it happened organically. I think as far as I can see in Japan. Share or being calm to mm. do the right and then get together with somebody that just concentrate but also this is a safe place to share and the stitching or embroidery is just a way to calm it down mm. yeah. whether it's a war zone or post war zone yeah. or a thriving urban like this doesn't really matter. I think they have a lot of players like this for kids. But not far out. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> right? But in Japan, maybe I don't know because I you never been to irregular asylum, but right? it's a cool space. Yeah, and the uh, also things like that associated with women, but in a way like the picture we see that it's not not, and a certain way it's going beyond the bedroom. The, the organizing team remains uh, women, and uh, most of the participants are women, but um, we are open, you know, like uh, the activities like this, or, or even this project, Cooperation for Creation, um, is the first time that we include uh, all genders. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, Women Manifesto is uh, not only uh, women, women as such, you know, but yeah, mostly. So, yeah, nice to see some men involved in such a uh, activities. Mm -hmm. I think the activity she was talking about is a man, right? Yeah, it's a man. It's a man artist. Yeah, cry. Yeah, I think the name. The name was not mentioned. It's quite famous. Uh, Thai artist. Uh, so, any other comments or reflections on 
anything that come to mind? Man. Well, this is not a gender-based remark. It's just that you almost use the expression only connect. And I don't know whether you know that that was the kind of motto of E.M. Foster, the 20th century British novelist who wrote Passage to India and Howard's End. And Howard's End, I mean, that is the message he tries to convey, only connect. And I, it just came to mind because that's what you nearly said when you were talking about the importance of strengthening connections and so on. There was a big project a few years ago that people were not stitching, but I don't know the word in English, marken. It was, it was this wool. And then they made blankets. And, um, they made blank, uh, small parts. It was like this. And they were working together. And finally, to make one huge, huge blanket. And were you involved in that project? Or do you know about it? When, when was that again? Do you remember the name or I, I'm intrigued to, yep, maybe I, yeah, I'll look it up, yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there are many uh, projects with textile and re especially now also use of textile, but also HIV AIDS, you know, the, of the big uh, to remember people who had died of HIV AIDS. So there are a lot of use, but this is the interesting thing is the collective coming together to do it uh, together. So maybe you can say more about what you will do tomorrow exactly. Yeah. So what's happening uh, tomorrow exactly is very uh, free form. Some people took it as a um, stitching workshop oh i will come and learn something no uh is no no learning happening it's just uh stitching activities or embroidering activities so um so uh if people come there will be this uh um toolkit here in the wooden box and basket full of uh of cut fabric that people and this is some uh pieces that some pieces some stitches uh, stitched pieces um from um the exhibition that are not joined with the big piece yet so uh you can use this as a uh base and continue from this as you can see there's some part from someone who's skill skillful and is neat and nice but we again um we are not looking for that uh, people can just come uh, with their own fabrics or just uh, take the um, fabric uh, provided here to to join together, yes, and to, to sit and uh, work. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the time they can come, they can go for a coffee break, for lunch break and come back because uh, the activity happens from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. Uh, for the four days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, so is uh, freestyle. Mm -hmm. It's happening here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, tomorrow I won't gonna be there, but uh, uh, my colleague um, Hila Wang will will come at uh, and then uh, then on the twenty ninth. Yes, and then another time on the 6th of July and, no, uh, oh yeah, 6th of July and their 20, 27th of July, yes. So, um, so just come, <laughs> come with joy, with our, um, what, um, with our, you know, this uh, curiosity and fun and, you know, be, be a child and <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can bring basically the place yeah. is here. Mm -hmm. You can buy coffee and tea and continue to chat and do some exercise with the teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Meditation. It's very healing, very but meditative. Again, uh, we are not looking for professional. They are not looking for professional. I would do terrible things. <laughs> I am sure, but I mean, you can, the important thing is to really participate so that it becomes a beautiful thing. And I think you can give all kind of meaning. I mean, the political, you know, the Gaza and the war and Ukraine and all the southern Thailand, Myanmar, of course. So there is a lot in terms of men, men, the global order. When we quite a big task, but still, at the least, think about, or otherwise your personal life or social life. So there is a lot that can go into this. And it's open from 11 to, we open at 10 actually, but 11 is when this activity starts up to 7 o'clock. So anytime, there is no fixed time, and anyone can come in and just use uh, the textile, but it's also good if you bring your own textile. So in terms of sustainable use, things that you don't use normally. So kind of reuse textile that you have at home. So that is also very good if you bring your own uh, textile. Anything more to add? I, I forgot to mention one thing it's about... It's free, yeah, by the way. It's yeah, free. Donation free. welcome. <laughs> yeah, so, so one more little message that um, I forgot to mention to, uh, earlier is about, like, um, thank you for reminding about this uh, mending the world that's what's happening. But it's also the invitation to, uh, to uh, mend the inner space, right? The, because... Um, most of people here in, in on Earth got uh, the broken part in us somewhere, you know, or healed or not healed or more healed, less healed. This is also the invitation to to go um, inward to experience that process as well as a reminding message. Okay, thank you. Okay, so some final comments, maybe, Lawan? Not a comment, just that when you come and then you will find friends, you know, to make friends because life in the city can be lonely. And to sit together, you never know, you know, it just uh, warm your heart. And to do something with your hands, which we, you know, do less and less this day, and to connect with yourself and with other people, it's really bring us back to being a human. And Anwadi, your last words. Uh, I think I might come tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Bring your clothes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so if you guys come and we can meet again and discuss other things. <laughs> Very good. Jamila, your last word? Uh, no, I think I said it all and I uh, just want to thank you. Thank you from uh, my heart, our hearts, for being here and uh, 
small group, but it's very uh, sweet. So thank you so much. And open, yes. So uh, we have some coffee, tea, and small uh, cake and fruit, and also later on, so you can continue to converse on this. You can even start to stitch if you want. And on your way out, don't forget to give a donation to C Junction so that we can continue to do this kind of activity. Thank you very much.